Hi Vinyl community, it's Wolfie Renkin and I've got some things to show you. Uh, first of all, as you know, I've been collecting Holly Johnson stuff. Uh, I got another one promo. It's um, In and Out of Love and uh, it's just got a little thing on the back to say about the single. Uh, I've, I've got Europa, so I don't kind of really need this. There's a single version of this on vinyl though coming out, um, but I don't know. It's a it's a promo. Promos are interesting, so I picked it up. Okay, there was that, um, but possibly, I mean, it's a good song. I'm nothing against it. I've just been collecting so much Holly Johnson stuff that I think some of you probably a little bit sort of, oh, he's done it again. Does he ever collect anything but Holly Johnson? Yeah, I do. I'm just in a fad at the moment. Um, it is good. Th it is good though. Good stuff. Uh, well, I've got this. You know when you get um, a vinyl single and it's coloured and, you know, it might be Yellow Submarine and it's yellow vinyl and or it could be Pink Floyd and it's on pink vinyl. It makes sense, right? Okay. Well, this one is clear. And I thought that made perfect sense. It's Heart of Glass by Blondie. So that's, I think it's an old one. I don't think it's a remake or anything. Yeah, I, I don't think it is. I think it's just the original not 1979 single. And what's weird about it too, as far as I'm concerned, is this thing here, look. It's a massive, massive hole. And um, this is because it was produced for the American market, possibly for the Canadian market. I don't know. Do the Canadians have big holes in their records like that too? It's very unusual uh, for us to see that unless we get an imported record. In fact, uh, I've, I've only got one record out of maybe about 400 or more singles. I don't know how many singles I've got. Maybe 400, 800. You can count them up. I've got Discogs. Just go there and have a look. But I've got about, what, about a collection of nearly a thousand in total with all the CDs and everything like that. I don't know what I've got as far as singles go. Anyway, here's... um. Queen's Radio Gaga, and this came out uh, when? Uh, it's got the year on it. When did it come out? 1984. And uh, I'm just showing you this because that's the kind of hole that we have in Australia. Little normal hole like that. Okay? Uh, and, and you can't even press this out. You know, some of the records you can press out, but this one you can't. And that's just normal for here. So, for for the Australians who don't really know what to do when they come across this, there's an adapter on your turntable. You know that, don't you? Down the back, just feel around and you'll find this little plug thing and you just put it into your record and actually you put it on your turntable and then plonk your record on top of it and it's done and uh, no worries. But it's very, very weird to see this. really is. Um, but yeah, you know... Apparently RCA and I think it was Columbia were having a format war when records uh, just started going from 78s to 45s and 33. And uh, RCA didn't want Columbia to use their turntables. And Columbia didn't want RCA to use their turntables. So they had two different ones that would only play their own records. And that kind of pissed off the public. And uh, they got over it and the shook and made up and... They had to. RCA was going broke. RCA was going broke. And the reason was um, a lot of their singers were confined to singles and they started to think, you know, I could probably make an album and it would probably sell and I'd get more popular. And so some of the artists decided, well, stuff you, RCA. I'm going over to their side and I'm going to make albums from now on, and uh, RCA started losing some of their top artists. So they started to think, oh, gee, this is a real bad business move, isn't it? So um, they started going, okay, we'll make albums too, and their artists stayed with them. And uh, I think by the time that uh, Turntable started to come out here in Australia, the format war was over, and um, that was good. That was really nice. And you could also play 78s and 
16 RPMs. Have you come across a 16 RPM record in your collection? They exist, very rare, and I've never had one myself. So, yeah. Also, I want to show you a couple of other things that I've got, uh, which might be of interest. Have you ever had difficulty opening up a box containing a rather rare record and you're thinking to yourself, oh, there's a chance I might cut this. Okay, get yourself one of these. These are really good. Uh, it's just got a little blade in it and you can, you can just run the thing up like that. And as you can see, the blade comes out. And what you do is you set it to the, the tiniest little point there, like that, just enough so that it's going to cut through the, um, the tape. You know, I mean, the sellotape, the sellotape. That's a word I haven't used in a long time. Um, you know, the sticky tape. Yeah, because if you have a blade like that or a knife or something, there's a good chance you're going to slice through your record cover or the record itself. Not a good look, especially if you pay 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 1,000 bucks. You don't want that. So you have it down really low, and you're only going to cut the cardboard at the most around the record, the packaging. I mean, the packaging that the record is in. You know, the post pack. I don't mean the record cover. So that's safe. That's good. Do that. Get one of these. These are cheap. They'll save you a lot of trouble. Okay? And you can also completely pull it in after you're finished with it. So it's nice and safe. Now, uh, I was going to show you this some time ago. Um, we've got a bloke called Dick Smith who had an electronic shop here in Australia, sort of like um, Radio Shack over in the US. And, and there's another company in Britain that's similar, and I can't think of their name either. But anyway, uh, Dick sold off his uh, electronics firm. And uh, he started producing Australian-made food and stuff like that. And... <laughs> He, he released this, Dickheads. Yeah, so I hope that gave you a laugh. Um, I'm still waiting for a few things. There's, uh, I, I think you know that I got my Pleasure Dome uh, box set. I showed you that last time, and I opened it last night. And there, were, uh, there was a tiny little card inside, and it was for downloads. So I went to the site thinking that there might only be about 10 things to download or something. And there was a great huge list and a lot of them were flax. <laughs> and they were huge. I mean, they were huge. Some of those files were, most of them on average were about 100 megabytes each. One in particular was about 450 megabytes. Um... And just before I got them, there was this little message on the screen that said, if I've got dial-up, can I use that to download these files? And the advice was probably not. <laughs> it took me ages. I've probably blown my download limit for the entire country uh, last night on this, on this set of files that I got. Uh, they sounded magnificent, I've got to say, but holy cow. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Um, anything else? Oh yes, I, I'm waiting for a poster to turn up, which is to, which goes with um, Pleasure Dome. In fact, the poster was signed by Lo Cole, who did the erotic artwork on the inside of the Pleasure Dome album, and um, I'm, I'm waiting for that. I'm still waiting for my um, what's it called, the, the Wolf Cop ones. Uh, one was sent a few weeks ago. It's still not here, and I'm a little bit distressed by that. So uh, I hope it turns up this week. Mm. But everything that has been posted away has been posted away. So hopefully, hopefully it's not going to take much longer. Anyway, that's me for today. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Um... Yep, I think I've done it. Bye-bye.